Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at how to turn your old Windows PC into a file sharing server for free. You can do a lot of things with an older PC or even a more modern PC. You can put in a couple of drives, create a RAID, install some software, and you'll be able to create your own little server here. This will be great for Plex, file sharing, or even hosting your own website, or any of those things that you want to do with your PC. So if you have an older PC like this and you want to turn it into a file sharing server, I'll show you how to. So what you need to do first, if you want to create your own RAID, you can read all about RAIDs. I'll try and leave a link for this in the video description here. And this will explain what a RAID is and how to set it all up. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a RAID if you don't want to set up on your system. But if you're using multiple drives, you might want to set up a RAID on that system. So let's first have a look here what we've got here. We've got a Windows 10 system. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a file sharing system here first. So what we're going to do is download Docker. This is a free download. All you need to do is do a search for Docker install Windows and then open up the official website and it will show you how to install Docker on your desktop on Windows. It's very simple and easy to do. We will need WSL uh, as well, but this will take care of a lot of this for us. So you can see there's some information here about installing Docker desktop on your Windows system. And there's some information here on how to do this via the command line if you want to. But we're going to be downloading this little executable file here. Click on that and it will download it to your PC. So once that starts downloading here, you should see it up on the top right hand side here. You can go to your downloads folder and double click on it. Or we can just double click on it right here. And this will open up the file that we're going to install. So let's go ahead and say yes to the user account control. And you should see something looking like this, which says configuration. We want to make sure we use the WSL2 instead of Hyper-V. That's recommended. And you can add a shortcut to your desktop. Once you do this, it will go ahead and download, unpack it, and start to install it. And then you're going to need to restart your PC to finalize the installation. So let that go ahead and restart and update and configure Windows. You should start seeing the system boot up. And again, it's just going to finish off configuring the Windows updates here. And we will be back at the desktop. You should now have Docker installed here. So what we're going to do here is double click on the icon because that was left on the desktop. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And this will open up the application. So here we're going to accept their terms conditions. And once we do this, we can move on to the next step. Use recommended settings requires administrator password. That's perfectly fine. Click finish here. And once that's done, we should see this window here. Say yes to the user account control here. And we're going to skip the welcome to Docker here. So we're going to skip this part and we're going to skip the survey right here and skip the sign in process. This will take a little bit of time to populate. But once it's done, you should see starting the Docker engine. Once this is done, you should see something looking like this. If you don't know what Docker is or what a container is or even how to run a container, watch these short little videos here. They're five and six minutes long. They will help you understand what Docker is. There's also some more stuff on View More in the Learning Center on the uh, little link down below it. And this will give you a good understanding of what Docker is. Once you understand all of that, you can move on to the next step. If you already know what Docker is, we can go ahead and start setting this up. And I'm going to go through and show you some things that you can do with Docker. It's a little bit limited, and we'll show you how to install Portainer as well, which gives you a little bit more control. So let's go ahead and start off with Docker Desktop here. So you can see we've got containers, and we also have images, volumes, builds, and so on. What we want to do next is install Nextcloud for the Docker. So let's go ahead and type Nextcloud Docker in the search and do a search for it. Open up the official page. Make sure you're downloading Nextcloud and the official image. That's important. You can see there's quite a few people have downloaded this. And what we're going to do is we're going to download this. Read all the information on the website. There's loads of good useful information on here. But what we need to do is use this small bit of code here. I'll show you where it is. So we're going to come down the page a little bit more here. Once you've read all the important notice and quick reference guide and stuff like that to make you understand what Nextcloud is. Once you understand all of this stuff, we're going to come down a little bit further on the page and we're going to need to copy a little small piece of code here. I'll show you where it is down here. 
and you can see how to use this image and it says using the Apache image right here. What is Nextcloud? It tells you everything about Nextcloud and this is a good way of accessing and sharing all of your files, calendars, contacts and mail and everything else over the network to other devices. Next, we're going to use this bit of code here. Make sure you don't copy the dollar sign here. Just copy the little bit of code here. Otherwise, the code won't work. So just copy that part here. And we're going to go back and we're going to open up PowerShell by right clicking on the start button and open up Windows PowerShell as admin. Say yes here. And this will open up this box here. From here, we're going to right click and paste. And from there, we're going to push enter. Make sure it says admin and push enter here. And you can see here, it's going to go ahead and start to download and unpack all of the necessary files that it needs to run Nextcloud on the Docker that we've just installed previously. So we'll just let that go ahead and do its thing. And once it's completed, we can close this off and we'll go back to Docker and take a look. So it's just finishing off here. You might see this Windows Security Alert, Windows Defender Firewall has blocked some features and you might want to open this up if you want to access it outside of your network. And if you also want to access it inside your local network, you can do private networks such as home network or work uh, network, depending on how you want to set yours up. So if you want to access this from outside, I can make a video showing you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward, but we're just going to allow a private network for now and move on with the next part of the installation. So click allow access. And from here, we can now close off the Windows PowerShell window. And from here, we're going to go back to Docker. You should now see we do have uh, Nostalgic here. And it also says Nextcloud gives us the status, which is running, gives us the ports that it's going to be using. And it tells us the last time it started, which was a minute ago. And what we can do now is go to our local address here. And you can see localhost colon 8080. Once you click on this and you'll see we do have Nextcloud right here. Now you're going to need to set up a uh, login and also a password for this. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to call this, say, admin. And we can give it a simple password just for this tutorial. But you want to really use a complex password here. Next, we can install right here by clicking install. And this will install our database. So let's go ahead and click install. And once that's done, because we've got our login and our password set there, it will go ahead and set all this up for us. And you can see it's showing us some recommended apps. If you want to put these on here, you can. I'm just going to skip this for now, but you can set up your notes, Nextcloud, Office, Mail, Contacts, and all that other good stuff if you want to share that across the network as well with other devices on the network. So I'm just going to skip that for now, but you can set this up yourself afterwards. And now we're going to see Nextcloud starting up here. And you can see Nextcloud Hub is now starting. And we can now move on to the next phase. Now you can see what's new and read all that stuff if you're not familiar with this. And again, there's a bunch of other information here. If you want to read more about it, you can do. But what we're going to do here is close this out and we're going to open up our browser here. And you can see continue with unsupported browser. So I'm going to click on this. And here we are. We're at the next cloud window on our local network. There is your dashboard right here. And here we have our files. If we click on here, you're going to get access to your files, which you can share over the network. This is all your documents, photos, templates, all that sort of good stuff. You can delete some of this stuff if you want to and start afresh. But basically, you'll be able to now share all of your data across the local network very simply and easily with Nextcloud. And you can see here shares. You can share with you, share with others, and share by link, and all that sort of good stuff as you would do on a server. So a really useful way, you can delete all these photos and put your own photos in by clicking on the add button to create a new album. These can be all your holiday photos and other stuff like that, which you can now share across the network with other devices. This is all your activity right here. Very simple and easy to use. So a lot of this stuff can be deleted and create your own stuff on here so you can make it your own. So that's how you can get Nextcloud up and running and share files over the local network 
using Docker and also using Nextcloud. Next, if you want to install Portana on here, which I would advise you to do because it's much better than the basic Docker that you have here. And we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how to do that just in case you want to do that on here. So next, what we're going to do is do a search here and we're going to do install Portana. And once you do a search here for this, install Portana Docker, you're looking for the install Portana CE with Docker on Linux. And we can click on this and it's going to allow us to set this up. And again, it's going to be some simple code that we're just going to paste into PowerShell. You can see install Portana right here. We can come down and if we come down for deployment, you'll see in the deployment area, it says first create the volume that Portana service will use to store the database. This is the code right here. I've just copied it. I'm going to right click on the start button, open Windows PowerShell with admin. And what we're going to do is going to go in here and paste it in and push enter. That's now done. Very simple and easy to do. Go back to the document and we're looking for then download and install the Patena service container. So next we need to copy this long code right here and it's got our ports on there. You can see 8,000 and for HTTPS it's 9,443. So we're going to paste that into our PowerShell window, push enter, and it will look exactly like Docker did when it was coming down, unpacking it and installing it on the system. So we're going to go ahead and let that happen. It's going to take a bit of time and that's now completed. We're now finished with the uh, Windows PowerShell window so we can close this down here. And once we've done that, we can open up our Docker window here and you will see Portana is now installed into our Docker. It's also given us the status saying it's running and it's given us the ports here, 8,000. We can show all ports by clicking on show all ports right here. And if we do that, it's given us the HTTP uh, link right here, which is for 9443. Now, when I push that in, it doesn't work. It says uh, client sent an HTTP request to an HTTP server. So what we need to do is go in the front of this and do put HTTPS and then we can put colon forward slash forward slash and that should then work. There we go. Your connection isn't private. That's fine. It's on the uh, local network. Click advanced and click continue to our local host. And there we have the Portana page where we need to set up our Portana installation. So give it a username, a password, confirm that password, and we can then create that user account. It wants to have 12 characters, so let me add a few more on the end of here. And that should now be done. There we go. Click on uh, Create User, and this will then create our Portana user. So we can also allow connections uh, of anonymous information, but I'm not going to do that. And again, once we're here, we can see that we do have our menu that looks very similar to Docker, but we do have a little bit more uh, control here, and we can do more inside Portana. And once you click on this, what you can do here, we can go ahead and start to look at our system here. So we can see we have uh, connected your local environment to Docker Portana. So that means we're visible in Docker as well as inside Portana here. So you can see here is our environments. And right here we have two containers which we already installed. And the local setup is up and it's up and running. And we've got two volumes, two images. And if we click on the dashboard right here, you're going to basically see it's showing us our free networks, also images and all that sort of stuff. We can go on to templates here and take a look at all of the templates. And you can mess around and install whatever you like here. You can put Plex server on here. You can run your own website on here. You can do quite a lot inside here. Just go down to the bottom and flick through and take a look at all of the application templates that they have to offer. There's quite a few to choose from. And again, there's loads of others that you can install on here as well. So right here, you can see, I'm just going to click through here and show you what's available on here. And you can see there's Ubuntu and we also have WordPress on here. If you want to set up a quick WordPress website, let me just quickly show you that in a second. And we'll be able to click on that and set up a quick web server that will host your WordPress website right here. So click on it and all you need to do is configure it, give it a name and we can call it whatever we like. So let's go up to the very top and give it a name here. And you can call your website whatever you like. This is just the name for the site. So let's go ahead and we'll call this a test site just to uh, test it out. 
There we go. And from here, the database root password, you'll need to give it a password. Let's just give it a name called password. You should give it a much more stronger password. And then we're going to deploy uh, the stack here to get this all done. Now we'll take a bit of time to uh, deploy the stack. But when we go back over to Portana, you'll see that we now have our test site with WordPress and our database, our Portana. And also we have our Nextcloud running all on this system right here on the left hand side. I'm opening this up in Google Chrome now. And you can now see we can go to this local host site here and we can now go ahead and install WordPress on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. And again, it wants to use this information right here. So I'm going to say, OK, we now need to sign in with our username and password that we set up uh, during the installation process. Log in. And there we are. We're at the dashboard and at the back end of our WordPress website. And all you need to do here is configure all this stuff to run your website. And there you go. You can put your posts in here. And that's basically how you can set up a WordPress website inside Portana. It's very simple and easy to do. There's loads of other stuff you can do, like running a Plex server here if you wanted to, running through here, or other things as well that you might want to do inside Portana itself. And if we look at the dashboard of Docker here, you'll now see that our WordPress is also here. It's just mirroring it over to uh, Portainer here. So that's it. Pretty much that's how you can use uh, the Docker and also how to use Portainer as well and how to use Nextcloud and set up other stuff on Portainer as well. Hope this video has been some sort of use to you. It's great for sharing files and things like that across the local network. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. Have a lovely day and I'll catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.